Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. And I'm here today in the middle of the week to share another thought with you. This one comes from the prophet Micah. Now, we don't read Micah a lot, probably. He and the other minor prophets, as they're called, kind of get pushed aside for the big guys, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and, and the Jesus books, gospels, that sort of thing. But Micah has a question for us today, and, and one that uh, might be just as relevant today as it was when he asked it. In Micah chapter 6, in verse 6, he asked the question, What shall we bring to the Lord? Well, now let me stop there a second. Have you ever asked the question, what can I do that will get me closer to God? Do I pray? Do I pray a certain way? Do I have to be in a special place? Do I have to use certain words? Do, do I have to use some kind of formality? Do I, I give money? And how much do I give? What, what can I do to earn God's favor? What, what, what can I do? to clean up the mess that surrounds me, or that I made. You know, I I mess up with God all the time. Uh, I don't mean to. I'm just human, like you are, <laughs> and like Micah was. And so he asked this simple question, what can we bring to the Lord? Now, it's not so much wondering, you know, is there a special gift? But he just asked the question. Have you ever asked the question, what can I bring to God? Well, let's listen to his answer. He follows with several more questions. And he said, should I bring him burnt offerings? Now that's an idea. It's very biblical. Uh, in the Old Testament, there were burnt offerings for everything. And, and there were burnt offerings for all kinds of people. If you were really rich, you had a certain offering. If you were really, really poor, there was still an offering you could make. You couldn't do what the rich guy did, but you could do something and come to God with a burnt offering. So that that's a suggestion that he makes. And then he says this one, Shall we bow before the Most High God with offerings of dearling calves? Well, if you don't have a calf, what are you going to bring? You know, the idea that I can bring God a gift that will satisfy him is, well, it's, it's kind of strange. God is the God who made the creation. What gift might I have that would make an impression? So he asked again, should we offer him thousands of rams and 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Now, I, I can tell you right now, there aren't many people who would have thousands of rams and 10,000 rivers of olive oil. <laughs> I mean, let's face it. Uh, if we got one bottle of olive oil or two, we're doing pretty good. And as far as a ram, well, most of us don't have any rams. We don't keep sheep. Uh, about the best we got is a dog or a cat. So should we say, shall I bring him thousands of cats? And all the dog lovers are going, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, you know, Micah says, well, let's, let's expand this thing. Let's not make a burnt offering. Let's not offer a yearling cat. Let's offer a huge amount of stuff to impress God. And then that way I'll get his attention and he'll listen to me. Well, then he has one more thought. Should I sacrifice our firstborn children to pay our sin? Now, I don't know about you, but the idea of sacrificing my kids is a pretty tough idea. 
And the notion that somehow God would be impressed if I did seems crazy. So Micah is asking, what do I bring to God? And then we get to verse 6, and he says, no, meaning no to all those possibilities. No, don't bring a thousand offerings. Don't bring rivers of oil. Don't bring a, don't bring your own kid. That's not how you get close to God. Oh, people, the Lord has told you what is good. He, Mike is saying, God's already told us what to do. And then he says, and what is required of you? Micah is saying, look, you can't impress God with your luxuries, with your wealth, with even your smallest thing that is barely all you have. No, that's not how you're going to get God's attention. How are you going to do it? Well, the next verse finally says, this is what he requires of you. Do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Three things. Do what is right, love mercy, and walk humbly. Walk humbly with our God. You see, everybody can meet these requirements. You don't have to be rich, don't have to be famous, don't have to be smart, don't have to be handsome. You don't even have to be creative. All you have to be is a live human being. And you can bring to God yourself. Doing what's right. And you know, most of us knows we know what's right. It's not that we don't know. We just don't seem to do it. To love mercy. Uh, it's so much easier to pounce than it is to forgive. It's so much easier to blame someone else than to ask for forgiveness ourselves. To love mercy. The first thing, first response you have when something happens that's bad is one of mercy. And then finally to walk humbly with your God, to live a life that doesn't draw attention to yourself, doesn't say how special you are, but shows love and grace to all those that you meet. Now, I would suggest this passage makes it clear. All of us, whether you're religious or not religious, whether you're rich or you're poor, whether you're famous or nobody else knows your name, but maybe your mommy and daddy, whatever, all of us, we can come to God. We come by doing what's right, by loving mercy and walking humbly, hand in hand with him. Well, I hope that describes you. If it doesn't, change. <laughs> You can. Well, think about it. And thank you for listening. If you have a need or a concern that we can help with, please let us know. We'll do everything we can, as fast as we can, to help meet your need. Have a wonderful day. I'll be back tomorrow with another thought, but let's stay here today and do what's right and love mercy and walk humbly with God. Take care. I'll talk to you again.